Welcome to Strip Coverlet. I am Adrian Fort, and we are here for a quickie. This quickie is of The Haunting or The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. So what is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson? It was published in 1959, and it is Shirley, it was Jackson's fifth novel, and it is 246 pages. It is the story of Dr. Montague, <clears throat> who is sort of a ghost detective, as he rents out the Hill House in an attempt to document supernatural phenomena. He invites a few other people due to their previous exposure to paranormal uh, things. After that, things get weird, and one of the characters, Eleanor, gets weird back. Too weird. Spoiler alert, she dies. Three great quotes from The Haunting. And I just want to note right here that Shirley Jackson is capable of probably the most stunning and stark declarative sentences I have ever read, so this was difficult. Uh, I picked, I cheated and picked one more, but I think it's hard to pick quotes from, in my defense, I think it's hard to pick quotes from this book without using its opening paragraph, which reads as such. No live organism can continue for long to exist sanely under conditions of absolute reality. Even larks and katydids are supposed by some to dream. Hill House, not sane, stood by itself against the hills, holding darkness within. It had stood for eighty years and might stand for eighty more. Within walls continued upright, bricks met neatly, floors were firm, and doors were sensibly shut. Silence lay steadily against the wood and stone of Hill House, and whatever walked there walked alone. That is from the first page of the novel. On page 29, we get the quote, Hill House, she thought, you're as hard to get into as heaven. On 70, certainly there are spots which inevitably attach to themselves an atmosphere of holiness and goodness. It might not then be too fanciful to say that some houses are born bad. And finally, and I think I just have to read this in its entirety because, because of how much is going on here. No, Theodore looked up at her and smiled. I really am sorry, you know, she said. I would like to watch her dying, Eleanor thought, and smiled back and said, don't be silly. Among the Sufis, there is a teaching that the universe had never been created and consequently can never be destroyed. I have spent the afternoon, Luke announced, gravely, browsing our little library. The doctor sighed. No chess tonight, I think, he said to Luke, and Luke nodded. It has been an exhausting day. The doctor said, and I think you ladies need to retire early. Not until I am well dulled with brandy, Theodora said firmly. Fear, the doctor said, is the relinquishment of logic the willing relinquishment of reasonable patterns. We yield to it or we fight it, but we cannot meet it halfway. I was wondering earlier, Eleanor said, feeling she had somehow she had somehow an apology to make to all of them. I thought I wasn't altogether calm, and yet I know now that I was terribly afraid. She frowned, puzzled, and they waited for her to go on. When I am afraid, I can see perfectly the sensible, beautiful, not afraid side of the world. I can see the chairs and the tables and the windows staying the same, not affected in the least. And I can see these things like a careful woven texture of the carpet, not even moving. But when I am afraid, I no longer exist in relation to any of these things. I suppose because things are not afraid. I think we are only afraid of ourselves, the doctor said slowly. No, Luke said, of seeing ourselves clearly and without disguise. So sell it with a sentence. You've heard of this Stephen King fellow, yes? The king of horror? Well, he says Shirley Jackson was better than he is, and he's right. The three best things. The big bad of this novel is of the ghost variety. And for me, the best ghost stories are where you can never tell whether there are ghosts or there aren't ghosts. There are ghosts, but you have to question it. But they're there. No. No, really, they are, though. But are they? Those are the best types of ghost stories. Two, 
the dynamic of Eleanor battling with her past in many ways, and in many ways her present and future, makes her so real and makes this story so personal that I'm almost uncomfortable calling it a horror novel as opposed to a literary novel, and that comment is going to get me hell below. Three, there's this quote on 22. Don't do it, Eleanor told the little girl. Insist on your cup of stars. Once they have trapped you into being like everyone else, you will never see your cup of stars again. And in the bitter sweetness of this statement is the literature that is skimmed off of the top of mere writing. Uh, and it allows us not to be sad at Eleanor's demise. The three worst things about this novel, one, we only get a conclusion for one character, a real conclusion for one character. Two, I wanted more from Dr. Montague. He is presented in a convincing way where you don't really question his authority, but I think that it would have been perhaps a bit more profitable from a reader standpoint to see him as a sort of cult of personality character. Uh, and three, I was not a big fan of the interlude with Mrs. Montague. Three themes and literary qualities. One, predestination and the struggle against it. Eleanor is a character tailor written for tragedy, and in many ways she is Shirley Jackson's reflection of self on the page. Um, her struggle in this novel uh, are, are truly a struggle of someone who has been conditioned a certain way and is violently trying to change her circumstance in the opposite direction. Two, religion. These are people living in a very religious time and to experience supernatural phenomenon in the way that they do in this book uh, is to credit the idea of an afterlife while simultaneously discrediting the idea discrediting the idea of Christianity uh, which ironically would put faith in a sort of limbo and three the power of places when you go back to that opening paragraph the novel itself begins with the power of a place, and the whatever that walks there only happens later, suggesting that all of these things are derivative of the place. Uh, but there are, there are symbols within that as well. The whole time you read this novel, The Hill House is imposing, but in Eleanor's story, it is also an overbearing mother, which is imposing. Classically, there are links in that symbology, but we can read. But can we read links into everyone's story here? Uh, for example, can we substitute the mother for an overbearing wife, or an overbearing family name? Three questions for further discussion. One, immediately upon finishing this novel, uh, the overwhelming question seems to be just how much autonomy did Eleanor have in her final moments? Two. What happens to good old Dr. Montague? Uh, I think that in modern cinema, it would be perhaps too tempting to take Montague and make him a Van Helsing type character and have this entire universe revolving around him, which would be regrettable. But I would like to know what, what happened with the good old doctor after these events. And three, what did Luke do when all was said and done? He sort of stuck out like a sore thumb in the novel, uh, and I've always been curious how the events that happened therein changed a rather affable character. Three recommendations based on The Haunting. One, The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, a short story as powerful as it is controversial. The Lottery uh, is sure to change a reader's relationship with literature. Two, The Shining by Stephen King, uh, which should not come as a surprise. Another horror novel about the haunted place, King Hales, Jackson. Uh, read this novel to see what he steals from her. And three, Anything by Joyce Carol Oates, who is another underrated female author. Um, both Oates and Jackson have a gift for declarative sentences and definitive characters. So what would I rate The Haunting? I would give this 90 wool suit and heavy sweaters out of 100. If you like this sort of thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button and give us a like below. Um, and we will see you with many reviews, quickies, and read-alongs in the future.